I call our world Flatland to make its nature clearer to you who are privileged to live in space. Imagine a vast plain on which lines, triangles and other figures move at will, yet without the power to sink into or rise above the surface. You will at once see that in such a country, nothing is or can be visible to us except straight lines. Should a person approach, his line becomes larger. If he retreats, it dwindles, you see. Yet, circle or square, a straight line he looks and nothing else. Now, our women, our women are straight lines. Our soldiers and lowest classes of workmen are isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles, which also have at their vertices a very sharp and formidable angle. Our middle class consists of equilateral triangles and squares, uh, to which class I myself belong. <laughs> Our gentlemen are five-sided figures, or pentagons. When the number of sides become so numerous that the figures cannot be distinguished from a circle, they are included in the circular or priestly order. And this, of course, is the highest class of all. Irregularity of figure means the same with us as a combination of moral degeneracy and criminality with you in Spaceland. When the irregular comes of age, he presents himself for inspection. If he is found to exceed the fixed margin of deviation, he is either destroyed or else immured in the government office as a clerk of the seventh class. How shall I make clear to you the extreme difficulty which we in Flatland experience in recognising one another? To be sure, our hearing is one simple means of recognition. But we cannot altogether trust to this method. A second method is therefore most important. Feeling. <laughs> now, you see, the sense of touch enables us to distinguish angles with great precision and is the critical test of recognition not only between strangers but as to the class. For instance, ah, Mr. Wintisterit, permit me to ask you to feel and be felt by Mr. Sprogles, you see, it's quite simple. Right? You see, I'm trying to explain to you how I came to be in my present <laughs> absurd position. You see, it was all a misunderstanding. It really was. You see, it was the, um, what was it now, the last day but one of the 1999th year of our era. And I was sitting in the company of my dear wife, discussing geometry and arithmetic with my youngest grandson, a most promising young hexagon. Oh, Grandpapa, if a moving point constructs a line and a moving line constructs a square, what does a moving square construct? Nothing at all. Nothing at all, you see. For geometry, it's only two dimensions. Grandpapa, uh, if one may picture the number three squared as a square, how may one picture three cubed? I've already explained it to you, you stupid hexagon. The you boy stupid. is not a fool. Right? Three cubed has an obvious geometrical meaning. How comes this woman here? What makes you think this stranger is a woman? Feeling is believing. Oh, permit me, madam, to feel and be felt by... <laughs> ow, 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 Lord, it's not a woman, it's not a woman. Can it be that I have so misbehaved to a perfect circle? I am indeed, in a certain sense, a circle. I am many circles in one. I'm terribly sorry, I can't That's all right, I well, don't don't worry. Step aside, Miss Alfred, a minute, dear. Uh, have you felt oh, me enough this oh, time? Oh, she was right. Most, yes. most illustrious sir. Please excuse my indiscretion. Right. <laughs> oh, Oh, would you deign to satisfy the curiosity of one who would know uh, whence his visitor came? From space, from space, sir. Whence else? To find space. Uh, right, um, uh, space, my lord, is length and breadth 
indefinitely prolonged. You think it is of two dimensions only, but I have come to announce a third. Height. 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 What, northward? No, no, not northward. Upward. Out of flatland altogether. Hmm. I still do not comprehend. When I cut it. through your plane, I make a section which you rightly see as a circle. So. Now, I will rise out of your plane, right. and my circle will become smaller and smaller oh. until it dwindles to a point and vanishes. Now, watch. Oh. There. Monster! Jack! Why will you refuse to listen to reason? Then meet your fate. Out of your plane you go into the land of three dimensions. Once, twice, thrice. Done. Oh. Oh. Impossible. My countrymen. Ugh. I see they're inside. Yes. Oh. Either this is madness or it is hell. It is neither. It is knowledge. It is three dimensions. Follow me. Now, I must introduce you to solids. Behold this multitude of movable square cars. See, I put one on another. I'm building up a solid. Now the solid is complete, and we call it a cube. Pardon me, my lord. Methinks I see no solid, but only an irregular figure. Uh, true, it appears to you a plane, because you are not accustomed to shade and perspective. But in reality, it is a solid. Pardon me, O oh thou whom I must no longer address as the... Uh, Perfection of all beauty. What? My lord, your own wisdom has taught me to aspire to one even more great. One above you, who confines many spheres in one supreme existence. Take me now on the second journey into the blessed region of the fourth dimension. There is no such land. The very idea is utterly inconceivable. Oh, and in that blessed region of the fourth dimension, shall we linger on the threshold of the fifth and not enter therein? Oh, no! Oh, no, indeed! Let us soar to the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and even the... Oh! oh. oh. oh there you are now, you... Uh, scamp. <laughs> now, uh... uh uh, yesterday you were trying to make me believe a square may by some motion upward produce another figure, a sort of um, extra square in three dimensions. Well, would you say that again, you young rascal? <laughs> Oh, dear Grandpapa, <laughs> that was only my fun. I don't think I said anything about the third dimension. How silly it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you scamp. No, it's not at all silly, you see. I take the square, the square and I move it, you see, not uh, not northward, but I move it uh, up, up, you see, not northward. I just, uh, I move it uh, up. Nonsense. What do you mean by those words? Well, I suppose, I mean. well, I suppose it's your way of saying northward and southward. Ah, not so, not so indeed. There is another motion. Exhibit it to me, then, if you please, this motion. You're charged with seditious and heretical actions arising from the profession of a belief in and attempted preaching to others. Of the third dimension, can you perhaps indicate the direction which you mean when you use the words upward, not the northward? I take the square, and, get this right, and I move it, you see, not, uh, not northward, but I move it uh, up, <laughs> up, you see, not northward. I just, uh, I move it uh, up. My lords. I can say nothing more. In that case, I have no choice but to sentence you to perpetual imprisonment. Not northward. Seven years have elapsed, and I am still a prisoner. Even my brother, whom I see in weekly interviews, has not yet grasped the nature of the third dimension. Even now, 
I cannot honestly say that I am confident as to the exact shape of a cube. And there are moments when even this hard ball that bars me from my freedom and all the substantial realities of flat land itself appear no better than the baseless fabric of a dream. Thank you.